Hello everyone, and welcome to Lecture 6 of uh, Computational Neuroscience on Backpropagation in Artificial Neural Networks. In the bigger scheme of the course, we're still dealing at a, a level of abstraction of neurons and network of neurons, and we're covering material that was developed originally in the 1980s by Rommel Hart, Hinton, and Williams. In the previous lecture, we discussed the perception and, and regression learning rules, uh, and these are methods for learning to approximate functions. Although when data becomes complex, we might need to extract useful features from the data through the use of these phi functions. Um, and again, to motivate the use of these features, uh, we now look at a toy data set of two con concentric circles of data points described by their x and y coordinates. And it's fairly obvious to see that there isn't one decision boundary we can draw through this data set that cleanly separates uh, the two classes. But if we use the right kind of transformation, we can turn this into a, a much easier problem. Um, <clears throat> the data points here are represented by, uh, by the radius, um, and then their angle with the x-axis. And, and I think it becomes simple to see that it's easy to put a line, a straight line, a decision boundary that separates the two sets of data points. In fact, we can actually put an infinite number of lines in between here. Um, but the problem is, is that we, we looked at this data and we, we engineered a feature transformation. Uh, and that's not uh, always going to be easy to do. This is, relatively speaking, a fairly simple data set. So here we have a much more complex data set. Uh, it, it's um, where we want to classify the visual data into categories of puppies, kittens, and bunnies. But it's not easy to determine how we should draw straight lines in this space of, of possible images that are hyperplanes, really, in the space of possible images uh, that let us draw these decision boundaries. So we are left with the problem of trying to determine what features to use. If we don't know anything about the problem and we are exhaustively searching through the space of possible features, then there are an exponentially, exponentially large number of features to try. But we may have the intuition that a lot of those potential features are not useful, and that some features are better than others for helping neural networks discriminate between different inputs. Is this intuition correct? Yes, it is. Um, we, can, we can try image classification using a number of different features, but we might want to take, um, take a hint from biology. In the 1950s and 60s, Hubel and Wiesel did research into the visual cortex and, and developed the um, and development of the visual cortex in, in cats. And they discovered that the brain does indeed learn uh, f features used in processing, processing data. We know that the brain learns these features, <clears throat> but how would we go about learning these features ourselves? Uh, we, we can't just hand design the features because we may not, they may not be robust. They, they may not reflect the statistics of the data that we're trying to process. And, and uh, our in, the intuition we bring to the design of the features may not actually reflect what's being analyzed by the network. So ideally, we'd like to learn these features, and we'd like to learn them faster than biology. Uh, the critical learning period in the brain is the part of development where, where the brain is, is sorting out, amongst other things, what to do with perceptual data. It's also when brains learn features in response to the statistics of the environment. This was demonstrated by some experiments uh, by Blakemore and Cooper in the 1970s. One of the ways they demonstrated this was that they raised kittens in an environment that had no horizontal lines, and they were unable to, when they were brought out of these controlled environments, these kittens were not able, at least at first, uh, to recognize things like the edges of tables, because that, that learning to extract that feature of a, of a horizontal line, an edge, uh, just didn't, didn't develop. Um, now, mind you, if the cats were, or the kittens were brought out of the, the controlled environment while they were still in the critical period, they learned to recognize, you know, the edges of the table so they didn't walk off of things all the time. But we also see um, it takes a relatively long time to learn how to perceive the environment. It can be on the order of weeks to months in, in animals. Uh, and if you co contrast between that and how long it takes you to recognize a new object, it can be seconds to minutes, we, we see a new object, we can then learn to recognize it, not only if it was presented to us in the same way, multiple times in the same way, but also if it's presented in different contexts and, and in different settings. Uh, which I think goes to show the importance of learning a good set of features to, to understand uh, a scene. 
Um, but it raises the question of, of what we're going to do to figure out the right set of features. So in the last lecture, we talked about regression against functions of the input, the five functions of the input. We attempted to learn the weights, wi, that helped us best do the job uh, of, of the regression or of the, the classification. Um, so what we're going to describe in this lecture is how to learn these functions while simultaneously trying to learn the weights. But can you think of a way that we can learn those functions? One tool for function learning that, that we've already developed is the perceptron. So we're going to use what's called a multi-layer perceptron. The structure of the multi-layer perceptron is we take the input data and we feed this into multiple perceptrons that represent, the, they're called hidden units, that represent the features or the phi functions uh, that are going to be used to, to be classified or, or regressed against. Uh, and then these outputs of the of the hidden units are fed into other perceptrons, which form the outputs of, of the network. Um, and of course, as discussed in the, in the last lecture, the dimensionality of the output depends on the dimensionality of the data we're trying to classify or, or, or predict. Um, and in effect, what we're doing here is we're replacing all of the phi functions with perceptrons. We're adding biases uh, to these perceptrons as we, as we did before. But now we need an algorithm to adjust the weights of both layers. And can you think of any ideas how to do that? The answer to that question is going to be the backpropagation algorithm. We should say an answer to this question is the backpropagation. And next, we are going to do the derivation of backpropagation.